talk about today reaches back up to the free expression in the indigenous community. And I agree with Ahmed that being able to work because you're paid to do that work is essential in order to express. So we'll talk to Ahmed first and spread our messages uh, in that way. Rayon, uh, is with of creating uh, partnerships with different actors in the cultural arena in Tunisia, especially the state and through the states, through ministers, through the administrations uh, that run this kind of work that is informal. Actually, I was a freelancer and I preferred to stay as a freelancer to gain some money. And then I had uh, some friends, and you're helping each other to work in the audiovisual domain that uh, needs a lot of people. It's not an individual kind of work, it's more of a group work. Then with time, we discovered that in Tunisia, 
there was a lot there were a lot of talents a lot of competences especially in the past 10 years so many people are working in the informal sector so this informal sector and uh, being not being recognized by the state creates uh, some instability especially on the social economic level and to be able to be paid and to live out of our arts this is why many of these artists had to leave the arts and go work somewhere else uh, where there is a stable salary. So we started working on this topic and we found ourselves, ourselves obliged to leave our art aside and work more on management because today we are managing 1,300 freelancers, artists, in Tunisia and they produce and have universities and institutions that produce more than 2,000 graduates in arts per year so it's very difficult for them to have a salary and to have a fixed salary so they all try to work in the informal market so we left our art to work on the management since the beginning, we understood that management needs to be done by managers and not by artists. And this is the problem in many associations and organizations in Tunisia, because the artists try themselves to manage uh, their work, but they rely more on their inspiration and they don't have a clear methodology and an objective one. So the first uh, partner that we tried to find was uh, managers and we wanted to work in the cultural sector and we wanted other formations for the whole team. We, uh, team. we wanted training for our team, trainings on managing, on how to manage a network because we manage the network of freelancers. After that, we went to dig into the management of the network and we found out that we needed to work on different sectors and the economic sector so that we would have the creative economy and cultural economy as well as on the finance because freelancers didn't pay taxes, they had a problem in their invoices and with the state and with social security. So here we have the four ministries and the Ministry of Labor. So we started working to find uh, partners uh, from the state. Uh, fortunately, in Tunisia, it's easy today, especially after the revolution, to access the ministers and the high officials. As long as our topic is seducing for them. And in Tunisia, after uh, terrorism, we found that it was easier for us to find doors that were open. So the, we, tried, we tried to convince the ministers and the officials and the administrations of our cause, but this changes quickly because the minister uh, stays in the ministry for one year and a half. So we often have a change in our government and in our ministries, and it's not something easy. In the beginning, it worked for us, but now with this second transitional government, and we have a new government that is only one month old, so uh, we have to do all the work all over again for three months. And we know that the new minister also will not stay long. So we redo this work. This is something that we have to do. It's tiring, it's exhausting, but we have to do it. So we have to take this path to be able to find regulations for our work as uh, artists and to be able to live through art and have a stable life. And this is why we've also decided to work only in Tunisia, on the Tunisian territories. The first reason is that because we don't have a lot of means, but there's not a lot of us, and the number of artists is growing very fast. 
so then there will be a risk of losing everything if we were to open ourselves to other foreign partners especially that the laws or the local context is atypical and we cannot create partnerships with other people that are doing the same as us like in Canada we have discussed uh, with many people there but also with English but we don't have the same context when we want for our network to be built on the basis of the characteristics in our country. So we work in British Council, go to Institute and the Thakafi for the training and to have more support for, for the administration, for researchers and for events. So this is uh, everything that I had uh, to say. I can add a bit more later on, but uh, I wanted now to respect the five minutes that you gave me. Shukran just now to respect the five minutes that you gave me. Shukran Jazilan Ahmad. Amal Annaka. Uh, what we felt the arts uh, were offering in the situations like Syria and others. And what I want to bring up on this panel is, is artist power. The power that we as artists or we as arts administrators have to actually effectuate change. When I talked to Ahmed and when I talked to Nayla, I heard similar themes, and I think Nayla will bring this up as well, that we do have the power to, to chart our future. And what I'd like to remind artists when I work with them as an administrator is don't be discouraged with the models that you create when they're not readily accepted by the system. The system will not readily accept our new models. It will try to reject them because they go against the status quo. So I want to thank you, Ahmed, for setting up a new model and sticking to it. I think you'll also see that the panelists today with their various innovations in alliance building um, propose an ecosystem of different ways to work with different partners. Um, I'd also like to ask if there's a burning question. If anyone wants to shoot a question up here to Ahmed, I'll ask. You'll have this opportunity after each speaker. I won't always ask it, but if you have something you just must know, please ask. And if not, we'll move right along to Oriyama. I will, uh, I will speak as an artist, um, also maybe as a festival director, and I'm becoming more and more kind of a cultural manager in the context where we evolve this question is to handle many, many things. So we created with uh, other artists the collective uh, 10 years ago with the need of going and meeting uh, our different audience in this country and the first alliance maybe that is more essential and crucial for us is the alliance with the audience and from that this is our starting point to grow all our projects and in fact we had the chance to go and tour and meet the different realities from one area to another between communities that don't share the same experience, the life experience, the same social, economical realities. We had the chance to build partnership all around the country and we grow our discourse, our creative propositions in contact with these people. And what you mentioned about artists possibly being able to change the context around them, I would just add, uh, because it's always a question, uh, how are we building these partnerships in the trust and the confidence in a, in a re relation of trust? And maybe it's as a starting point to be able as well to be change as well in our in these encounters and to accept to be the one to be changed by these encounters and yesterday 
in another subject, Rana spoke about fundings and the way to create this space of negotiation between funders and other uh, structures. I think it's also part of our job as artists to create these um, spaces where we can express to people that we are also ready to change because they are giving us a lot and they will give us their trust because they will hear this ability also for me to move and to step towards them and build a process or build a project or propose an experience built upon these encounters. So maybe it's a bit uh, uh, general like this, but um, from that we have been uh, led to, to create a festival that we don't like to call it festival because it's also based on relations, human relations between us first and the neighborhood around us where it all started, involving the community in this uh, cultural dynamic, involving, inviting different people to make this happen and to take part in a, making a free festival for free in a city where it's not so easy. And this event became in fact an invitation uh, where people are invited, where another relation is proposed that is not a consumption of art and uh, beautiful performance, but where there are people inviting others to share something and to resonate together in this. So maybe we will also develop later in the year. Wow, these, these panelists are very studious to the five minutes. I was expecting a lot of rule breakers and then I had to have a bell or something. <coughs> Tennessee Williams said, uh, he said famously, we live in a burning building. And the only thing that will save us is love. Gramsci said it a little bit differently. He said the old is dying and the new cannot yet be born. And we live in a terrible interregnum. Orion and everyone on the panel, I would suggest that these models that we're presenting are the only way forward. So again, I encourage you, and I would like to hand it over now to Bertha to tell us about her work with Acquiring the World Festival. Okay. So hello, um, I'm from Turkey and I'm the only one, I think, in this meeting from Turkey. So I think it will be something in a way, like how we move from, like, I mean, I feel in a state of isolation in many ways. <coughs> because I want to give you some facts before starting my little presentation. So Turkey is not in Creative Europe anymore. It was Turkey's decision. I don't know the official uh, declaration of Turkey, but it is said that because that Creative Europe funded a project, a concert, which supports the fact that it, uh, which actually says that says the sacred word, like forbidden word, Armenian genocide. So I think that's the reason. So we are in a state of emergency. So there are a couple of media channels which have been uh, kept like uh, closed in the last days. So we have some artists in prison again, etc, etc. So in, so all the things I uh, said actually is about the region, like relationship with Kosovo, relationship with Europe, relationship with Middle East, relationship with Balkan regions, or we have some other issues there. So Turkey like is in the middle of all these things. And I'm like questioning myself always, like which part of the world I'm really belonging to. Am I Caucasus? Am I Middle Eastern? Am I European? Am I? Thank you. So am I coming from the Bal? Am I belong to the Balkan region, etc. So anyway, this is like a corner of the world. We are like here. We are a region, and all these regions actually, Caucasus, Turkey, Middle East, Balkan, they are not really connected. So the idea of the festival is really connect all these regions to each other. They are connected to Europe in many ways, but these regions are not connected to each other, we believe. So we started this festival 
And just see, just ask me to give an example how we create alliances, just give an example uh, through our work. It's that actually maybe for, for the first time in Turkey we are breeding different funders like Mokrada, Afak, um, French institutes, uh, Dutch consulates, and some other institutions that I forgot to name maybe, but so this is like the first time that all these funders from different regions of uh, like different neighbors from Turkey come together to fund a project. So this is already a good alliance, I think, to start with. And um, this year, well, the focus was on Middle Eastern artists. So we invited many artists from Middle East, from Beirut, from Iraq, from uh, Syria. And we also invited artists from Europe, where it's origin. So this, is, this was also like a good starting point for me to create alliances between different artists and people. And as you said, actually, we are not naming the, the festival, we are like a platform because we want to do more than just organizing a festival. We want to create a platform for researchers, academicians, artists, and everyone who are interested in the region and like going further <coughs> from the region to other countries, like relationship between Europe, etc. So um, this is like the main point of the festival. It's going on now, actually. Now I'm here, I'm, at, I'm happy at the same time as we did test that I'm missing my festival that's happening right now in Turkey. But I find that it's important actually to uh, talk about my festival too. So I don't, I don't want to talk more. I'm stressed because I don't want to have five minutes. <laughs> but uh, I'm here and any, any artist from the region who want to uh, know more about the festival, myself, etc. I'm outside, I'll get to boost up, I'll be everywhere too. <laughs> As much as possible, thank you. We each need a table for our accoutrement. Um, as I said, I was expecting people to surpass the five minutes. Please feel free to push it to the edge. Um, but also, we expect that a really lively conversation will, will follow. So, um, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Mahmoud to tell us a little bit about the work of AFTI. We heard some of your work yesterday, so why don't you pick some examples that, weren't, that you weren't highlighting yesterday when you spoke. First, to say that two years ago we have started working on the, pro the program on freedom of expression and our association, and since then we are uh, thinking about uh, the how state is dealing with the uh, creative persons, in, uh, because it's, exclude, it's excluding uh, them from dealing with the artists. Uh, the same goes for the lawyers, for uh, for the for instance. Therefore, uh, we started our alliances with cultural centers. It was the uh, because it was the first um, adverse effect of uh, the state's uh, violence against the institutions. Uh, we have gathered a large number of centers around this coalition, and the state started to deal in a legal way with uh, these associations. Uh, these groups have shown a number of problems. Unfortunately, communication between cultural center centers dealing with different kinds of arts is uh, really weak, and uh, they are always uh, afraid of talking about their problems in the media in order not to for uh, in order for the state not to be attacking these associations or these centers and it was impossible for any association to have a legal or, or a formal situation therefore we started establishing local partnerships and alliances and afterwards we have uh, shed light on a number of uh, problems uh, that, uh, for for instance, the problem with Mashrua Layla group or team in Jordan. The problem was uh, the following: when uh, they wanted to uh, 
run the uh, celebration. The state said uh, hours before that uh, you cannot run uh, your celebration or the festival because you do not have the license. So, therefore, it's very important to have a legal uh, support. Uh, it's not enough for the associations to be communicating one with the other. We are in need of a legal support. Legal support is very important because it can contribute, uh, contribute in solving some of the problems, mainly the uh, granting of licenses and the modalities of uh, granting licenses. I will not be uh, saying that everything is optimal and that uh, legal support is always uh, beneficial or effective. Today, cooperation or communication between the association and uh, uh, the state uh, was, uh, is very important. We have started talking about the missions, the missions of the uh, Maurid which is a cultural center, center, and how can the association benefit uh, the artists? I'm talking here about a direct or an indirect support for the artists. The direct support encompasses following up the uh, cases and the uh, inquiries, as well as legal advice. As for the indirect support, we will be keeping pace with the uh, laws that are promulgated by the state in order to prevent uh, the uh, possible problems. We are talking here about the penal code that considered, as, Mr. as Mohab said, that street art is uh, at, uh, is a kind of uh, terrorism, and we can we have to deal with it according to the uh, anti-terrorism law. And the same goes for other uh, for the definition of some kinds of crimes that are not uh, clearly defined. Therefore, we will be able to deal with these, uh, these laws uh, in a sound manner. We have to define a certain clear vision. We have to uh, define the th categories with, wh with which we are going to deal, including artists and other players through advertising and uh, through supporting uh, or dealing with the uh, trade unions. We are trying to establish such an alliance. And I hope that uh, I was beneficial in what I presented. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. أنا أعرف أن معرضه مهم جدا وأذكركم أنا محمود Uh, 
الانجليزيه لان الترجمه الفوريه الى الانجليزيه متاخره جود ايفنينج اي ام نايلا شارجا اي ام ا لوير اند اي ويل بي بريف بيكوز اي بريفير تو هاف ا ديسكشن مور ذان جيفينج ان انترفينشن Practically speaking, I want to clarify something. I am uh, not a member in any association. I am uh, since 2008, 2009, when I uh, started working as a lawyer. I, it was important for, for me to work on cultural policies, and I had the chance to work with Hanan and with a group of as, uh, local associations who started working on uh, the, the cinema, on, on, on theater, and on, the, uh, on censorship, the pre-censorship and post-censorship related to the political field. We have worked for more than one uh, year and a half, and I did not imagine uh, that uh, we have uh, such a number of uh, cultural or artistic works that are uh, put under uh, censorship. And I don't think that, I, I think that we have a high, in, uh, a high level of censorship and so because we uh, take stock at the archives at, uh, on the reasons according to which the uh, general security is following some persons or uh, censoring some books or some uh, artistic works. It was very important in order for us to get to know uh, the things we are working on and we established alliances with these associations to work on different uh, low projects, uh, especially when talking about the pre-censorship and cinema and uh, to uh, regulate uh, the cinema and the theater as well and uh, the, pre the press and the media and I think that yesterday we have re animated this uh, initiative while presenting the uh, law uh, bill through the Minister of Culture because we have uh, cooperated with him in drafting this law and we hope that when the parliament will uh, be reactivated and will uh, legislate we will uh, we hope that we will be able to push towards uh, enacting such laws we were also able to deal as Mr. said, in 2008, a series of laws were published uh, in the cultural sector. Uh, when he said, I have an issue, my issue, in fact, is in the cultural sector, and contrarily to any other sectors in Lebanon, there, uh, there is no need to uh, enact new laws. If we take a look at the laws already existing, and I'm talking here about uh, political, uh, about, sorry, about cultural policies. There is a need to abolish some laws, but from one side, but from the other side, since 2008 and until now, we have a, a set of laws that, if the uh, that if uh, activated uh, cultural policies will be advanced. So we do not uh, need, like in, in other sectors, the legislator to enact. Uh, uh, more laws or to take positive steps. And what's really strange is that the laws I, uh, that were enacted in 2008 and contrarily to other uh, issues in Lebanon weren't the result of the pressure of uh, the uh, civil society or the cultural uh, scholars, but it was a kind of bargaining between the two main uh, blocks, uh, March 14, March 18 blocs, and uh, the MPs uh, did, not they, uh, did not have any idea about the uh, laws that were enacted or the laws that were passed and they didn't have they did have no idea on uh, uh, concerning uh, the laws or uh, uh, the trade unions. In Lebanon, we have a trust fund for the artists, uh, uh, theoretically and uh, in principle. The same goes for the law on cultural property, that through it we can preserve uh, the, culture, the material and immaterial heritage. I will not be entering into these details, but I, have also, all, I always have question marks concerning the uh, following. We have the legal uh, tools uh, concerning the cultural sector, but until now things are not moving. And, and general way. So we have we take uh, individual initiatives and as uh, uh, we have seen with Zena, um, many th individual uh, things or individual initiatives are taken but we s still cannot say that we have a comprehensive vision concerning the cultural sector in Lebanon. I will be brief uh, so I'm gonna apologize for uh, taking uh, long. 
but I want to start the discussion with the following issue. As a lawyer or as a consultant, I am not working in an association or in an organization, and I prefer to be working with the artists or with the associations to be able to think together on uh, how to build these initiatives or alliances. I am not representing a certain uh, part or a certain block, but let's think all together because I am attached to the law and uh, to uh, the, art, the arts at the, at the same time. There is a prob problem, in fact. We have two problems. The first problem... No, no, it's fine, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. So I think we are, fa we are facing two problems. The first one... <laughs> She's borrowing some minutes from the other speaker. <laughs> I think the first problem, problematic is uh, how uh, individuals or cultural associations, how do they see the state, and especially the Ministry of Culture. I know that in Lebanon, it's difficult to be defending the state, and it's not the role I want to play. But according to me, building alliances is based on uh, uh, on mutual interests. We have interests from different sides and we have to see how we can cooperate in order to serve our uh, mutual interests. Until now, uh, uh, we have uh, some difficulties except some initiatives. Uh, we refuse to deal with the state, to, uh, to establish a dialogue with the state. Frank, frankly speaking, if you want to talk about cultural policies, we have to start with the public sector. Since we have laws, we have to encourage and push towards uh, the implementation of these laws by the ministry. Then I wouldn't have been able to uh, work if she did not have a dialogue with the Ministry of Culture and uh, the relevant authorities. She would have been imprisoned. And she couldn't make it to have access to the prison. So we, let's think about how can we deal with the ministries. We can, uh, because if we deal with the ministries, they will uh, say that we do not have the uh, critical, uh, the uh, the critique uh, spirit, and we are dealing with an, an, an illegal state. Let's say so. Let's be smart in how to deal with the state. This is from one side. From the other side. When talking about establishing alliances bet between in or inside the cultural uh, sector in Lebanon, I, it's really uh, strange that we have a uh, few Lebanese uh, in the room with us, unfortunately. I don't think that we are thinking as individuals or as groups to establish alliances. So from the legal uh, framework, 10 years ago and until now, we have more than 14,000 NGOs in Lebanon. This is a huge number. So each three individuals establish an NGO, uh, they open a bank account, and it's done. And in the cultural sector, uh, unfortunately, if we take a look at the associations uh, publishing uh, uh, their funding uh, sources, we can see that their balance sheet is superior to that of uh, the Ministry of Culture. So let's think that we have to shoulder a certain responsibility in drafting the uh, cultural policy. When talking about uh, the legal framework, NGOs are a set of uh, a number of individuals dealing with funding partners in order to be able to uh, launch their activities. But we have other uh, legal forms that can feed these alliances. And here I think about the trade unions, cooperatives, and other uh, non-profit uh, organizations that are able through the in their internal tools or means to protect their uh, mutual interests and ensure the sustainability of uh, the work in order for us not to be relying solely on the uh, funding partners. 
So regardless of the fact, uh, regardless if you are uh, dealing with uh, Syrian refugees or not, let us uh, distance ourselves from the policy of the funding uh, uh, partners. We are forgetting that we have self-sustainable uh, internal tools that we can rely on. This is very important, I guess. I was highly philosophical, I, I think, and I apologize for that. Thank you. Thank you, Naila. Shukran, Naila. Uh, and, uh, yesterday, Alma, I believe it was you who said that you believe that art should be the space where the most beautiful and most terrible things can happen and be played out. And since we're technically in that space right now, Zena, I'm just going to say that your actors evoked some of my own prison fantasies, I have to admit. <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, it's not working. <laughs> But seriously, then I thank you for your work, and I'd like to give you the stage now. I'm not going to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, and I spoke to Zadi, uh, and I, I, I've shown my work. So let's give him more time, maybe, to discuss. Yeah? Unless, unless, unless yani, you want to know something uh, very important. And I, I, I already, I think, I summarized what are our partnerships. Um, uh, Government and government and government and ministers and you know so. Um, I shall get that. Sure. There is a burning question in my mind since we. I find this session, and I discussed with Jolan, and now the, the, this question is burning more in my head. What's the difference between the cooperation and the partnership and the alliance? I think, I think we should underline this in order to really go in further. Um, I won't pretend to have the answer. I have some opinions, but what I'd like to do, and we'll pick up that answer directly, um, three things. And uh, thank you for, uh, for giving to the floor. There'll definitely be time to ask Zena questions about her work. One thing I'd like to pick up, and it's a personal passion, is that Zena, you, but many of the people here on the stage have entered the space of policy making with their work. And I truly believe that not only do artists have power, but that artists are often policy makers. Not just that they can be or that they inform policies, but that their work can actually affect your policy. So I want to just highlight that as an example of what Zena's work is an example of that. Um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to do a little bit of talking amongst the panelists. Maybe there's a question that one panelist wants to ask another. I'll start. I have a question for Virju. I really feel that you didn't take enough time. I maybe scared you or I was sitting too close. So let me start by asking you a question. And I hope, Anand, that it, that it starts to, to dig into what you're saying. I think one way that one could, could uh, respond to what you've asked them is, are alliances necessarily the things that happen when money isn't available? Are they things that happen for solidarity's sake? Are they things that happen without hierarchies? I don't know that that's necessarily true, but it's one of the questions I would have. The specific question I'd like to ask for you, especially since we had a session this morning about networks, is do you consider a platform political? We hear a lot these days the word platform. A BNL can be a platform. An event can be a platform. A website, a platform. And I'd like to know, because I also use that term sometimes, if it is a political word, and how might it relate to, say, alliances, as Hanan has asked us. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think what we do is already very political, actually, because we take a side, we take uh, we have a word like towards the current system, let it be the government, let it be the current system in the world. Like the world is 
branching, categorizing, labeling us, like the states are labeling us, the system is labeling us, the fund givers are labeling us, and with our work actually we want to break these labels like as like Caucasus artists, Middle Eastern artists, European artists, or like all these words are labeled for us, and actually we want to break them, and it's something beyond the system, I believe, so it's political, according to me. Like, whatever we do, now we, we resist, so resistance is political anyway. So I think we have, like, a high political stance in our work. I don't know if it answers your question, but... Uh, like, what we do is already very revolutionary. I don't say that we are doing, like, a great, the biggest thing in, the, in Turkey, but in this current state of... Uh, life, let's say, in Turkey, like bringing all these people from different parts of the region and uh, creating all these networks, alliances. I don't really have the perfect answer for you as well, but for me, an alliance is like a sustainable long term cooperation, I believe. Like, uh, for example, just to give an example, like as we are collaborating with French institutes. They don't give us like huge amount of money, but they understand the value of our work and they kind of support us in putting us in different networks, suggesting us to different kinds of organizations and giving creating space for us and connecting us with different groups of people. So I think it's a good alliance for us, if I'm not wrong, to describe alliance. I'd like to keep that question. Just, just I see a hand in the back. I'm going to keep it up here on the stage for just a moment longer. I'd like to also say something in response to what Anand has asked because I, I do use the project that I make in Sao Paulo. I use the word platform to describe it, and that's why I wanted to ask that question. But also, I think that there is, I do consider, I guess maybe in accepting to moderate this panel, I interpret Alliance as a political thing. I interpret it as the thing you do with or without funding. We often are in these situations where partnerships are only activated when funding happens. And personally speaking, and I hear it in what Berger just said, that there are things that we must do without funding. And that maybe that's one way to, to interrogate the sort of alliance. But let's hear from some of the other folks on the panel. And if, any, if anyone else wants to speak to alliance, the term, then it will go to, we'll break it up into the whole. Yeah, I'm not really great at just like giving speeches like this. I like more discussions like this, so now I feel more comfortable saying things. Um, actually, you know, like um, you said political, I think breaking, as I said, breaking like the current system of funding relationship is always very political, I think. For example, in my work, I question always like, I will pass to a little bit mobility, but uh, for example, for a Lebanese art, for bringing a Lebanese artist to Turkey from Lebanon is more difficult than bringing a Lebanese artist who lives in France. So for example, changing this set of mind, like changing, just putting this question in mind of people, is very important for me. Like, for an Armenian coming to Turkey, it's more difficult than bringing an Armenian who lives in the United States to Turkey or things like this. Like challenging all these <coughs> kind of mobility relationships, it, it takes time and I think it's very, very political. Because the world is categorizing people like this, people living there, people have this origin, people coming from this region, that region. So yeah, I think what I do, what we do is political and which needs a lot of solidarity among, among people beyond the states, I think. Because like, for example, Creative Europe, we are not in anymore. But does it mean that we don't, we can't really cooperate with European people? Of course we can, but how? So that's a question. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak to the Alliance before we hand it over to the crowd, break, break down the hierarchy? بس لحنا تخيل كده يعني حكيت شوية عن هذا الموضوع إنه أنا يعني انتبهت إنه عم نحكي عن تحالف يعني 
لعلمك متحالف ومن انا نظرتي لما نقول تحالف يعني عم نقول انه في جهتين عندهم مصالح مختلفة بس الشغل مع بعض حيأثر او حيكون مثل عنده ابطال ايجابة بهذا الموضوع بينما لما بنحكي بارتنرشيب ونحكي كوبريشن او شيء عمليا يعني بيكونوا في اتفاق على Project. And I think that this is essential because when we clarify things, this will have an impact on the strategy we are using in order to apprehend things, especially on talking about uh, alliances with uh, official parties. You will uh, be, have to be able to convince the Ministry of Culture about the, not only about the content, the importance of the content, but uh, you have to convince the ministry that if they work with you, they will be practically giving a positive image through the ministry and through uh, its uh, place as a, a political or if, uh, an official authority. This is, tactically speaking, this is very important, and this is highly beneficial if we are thinking about uh, how the, uh, a certain group will be lobbying in favor of changing laws. I will uh, continue from where you stopped about the partnerships and mobility of artists and also about what you said about partnerships with the state as if it was a conspiracy or something negative. Microphone, please. Yes, especially with all what's happening uh, today, there is like a war between or uh, with uh, NGOs and civil society. I would like to invite you to think about this topic. Why have partnerships against and not partnerships for? because it's said that it's the state that is supposed to be uh, sometimes forbidding the artists from mobility, but uh, partnerships could be based on conventions, based on agreements, and you lawyers, you know about this. And we can have also informal partnerships, like relationships between human beings, human beings that are working in the state in a way that this artist is not presenting a danger, is not a risk and they will not be feeding the uh, dispute but ameliorating the the landscape the artistic uh, landscape so this is kind of an elastic work it's kind of a therapy with these people uh, that are sometimes considered as being psych as being psycho rigid but uh, in uh, reality these are human beings just like us that have also other objectives or different objectives. But I think that uh, we can work on this point. And we can. this can have many advantages for the freedom of the artists, for their mobility, without having to be confronted with these people, but through creating partnerships with them. Muhad fil khalf. ثم ألما وهنا. I have a question, a very important question that I always ask to myself. When we started working a year ago, when we were working in the street art, and we thought about what if something happened to us in the streets, what would we do? So we decided to work on the policies and laws that regulate the artistic uh, expression in the public space. So we decided to create an alliance with the institutions that have an experience in this regard so that if something bad happened to any of us, we would have this kind of solidarity. This way we would see what we need and so what we're able to present to the decision makers. When we got to a phase, where both studies were done, we tried to find decision makers, but we couldn't. Even the person who was in charge of the Human Rights uh, Committee in Egypt, he resigned because uh, if he was to give any statement, he was going to be sent to jail. 
so we had only the Ministry of Defense in front of us. So we had only the we could only meet with the Minister of Defense, Leila. You were speaking about the rape that happened by the British uh, soldiers. You could also speak about the virginity test that we heard about now in Egypt. What would, what would be done to you? So imagine what could have happened if we went to the Ministry of Defense. So for me, alliance means to do something to be able to protect each other or maybe if something happened to one of us then maybe we could have changed something but what happened a month ago after the alliance after both studies were published after the campaign on the social media I stayed waiting in the airport for uh, one hour and this is something new and there are also experiences like we find for example uh, kids in the streets, uh, they did some videos, they were sent to the prison and we couldn't do anything for them. The question is to which extent through these alliances will we be able to change, not even to change, to be in solidarity with each other if something bad happened to any of us and if any of you had a problem in Egypt and you were able to do something about it through solidarity, please speak about it. I know that things are different in Lebanon. You have freedom, you have decision makers, even if you're not able to reach something you still can discuss it. But anyway, in Egypt, we don't even speak about it because if we speak about it, uh, it means danger and risk on our lives. Thank you. Shukran Alma wa Zaminuna Mufalastin Bad Alma. Marhaban. Oridu an Akula in Nani Atakidu and Nana. I heard from the artists in the past two days because we heard that governments are in one place and artists are in a totally different place. So is it that we're not really examining the laws? Maybe we have prejudices when we speak about the Ministry of Culture and what it represents as a body, meaning it's not giving the artistic institutions the right in Lebanon, or maybe there are laws, but we have this prejudice and and prejudgment, and we don't know about them. Like, for example, in your movie, I saw Ministry of Justice, not Ministry of Culture, yes, Ministry of Justice. So at least there is one of the ministries. 
So should we maybe be more aggressive as our institutions, for example, in Lebanon, if we take Lebanon as an example, is it required to demand that the laws be implemented so that the more rights are given to art institutions and to artists, or are the laws anyway un unjust? You said that, that sometimes you say to people, you pass this for me and I'll pass this for you. But maybe goods are laws and are not implemented or they are bad. So this is a question. Uh, this is the question. إذا كان الجواب مباشرا نعم يمكن أن تجيبي فأنا أيضا أدون الأسئلة حتى تمكن الإجابة عليها لاحقا I also have a comment about the alliance alliance should be with people with whom I share a vision and can protect me because if I am to build an alliance with the ministry the ministry can meet me at a certain point but they can also harm me so I need partnership and alliance with people with whom I have a common vision, a shared vision, a shared path and the path that protects us and so that we can protect each other and remain in solidarity with each other and I'm not sure if this can happen with uh, ministries دعيني أعلق على هذا الموضوع You say that we need to have a shared vision if we're in an alliance. I don't want us to get hooked up on the semantics of it all. I would also like to say that probably some of us who do work with governments believe that there's a subversive necessity that we are actually accessing power that we might not otherwise have and that we don't, by working with the ministry, therefore agree with everything that ministry is otherwise doing. So I don't, I don't know what the answer is, whether we must have a shared vision or whether we might use or subvert a power regime to access power that we wouldn't otherwise have. It's a great question. We can keep it in the air. Are there other questions in the room? <coughs> Did you say you're from Cote d'Ivoire? Yes, I'm Mark Kissa from Cote d'Ivoire, but I'm, uh, I'm uh, Algerian. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Zaina, your uh, approach. It's uh, really amazing uh, because uh, you use arts to implement public reforms. And we know all that uh, multilateral um, partners today to implement reforms they drew um, a matrix of reforms and they say to the country, you have to implement these reforms if you want to get a loan. It's the case of uh, the African Development Bank where I, I work. Uh, so you gave me a, a very good idea to maybe to, to have uh, a new approach to implement the reforms, which reforms are also uh, appropriated by the authorities and the civil society. My question is, uh, what is your relationship with the European Union? Because uh, the mandate also of the European Union is to implement public reforms. Is this idea yours or is it uh, originally from uh, the European Union? And do you think that if uh, you haven't the support of the European Union, uh, you could implement uh, this, uh, this reform, this uh, rules. Thank you. Okay, because we are 10 to 6 right now, Zena, just give me one second before the response. Just one, just one second. What I'm going to start doing now is starting with Zena, who's going to respond to this gentleman's question. I'm going to ask each of the panelists to move this way and give some final remarks. That'll take us right up until 6 o'clock. We're going to drink on the roof tonight. We don't have to finish it in this room, so don't stress. Um, I'll do a, a last sweep of remarks, and then I'll ask Rana, Rana and, uh, and Natasha to come up, and we'll, right at 6 o'clock, we'll make a special, very brief announcement. You'll love it. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, so no, the EU didn't pick the, the subject or the theme or the project. They are not the ones who did it. They just, you know, like any other government, they would say call for a proposal for human rights subjects. You know. <laughs> Uh, let's say Catharsis would present uh, among the ones for whom we would say there is this project in prison. I don't know, another NGO would present for uh, uh, Syrian women, blah, blah, blah. Okay? But there are donors who approach us. Hi, uh, we need a project for uh, Palestinian refugees. These, I mean, other NGOs would take these, uh, you know, dictatorship no, donations, Yanni. You know, they have an agenda and they want you to fill them. I always tell them, I mean, go call someone else who would be your big student and do it. I hate this. And if our agenda fits the agenda of the donor, then it would be great. But I don't like when donors approaches you, Yanni, and they have to just teach how uh, they have money to disperse and let's finish with it. Okay? But you asked also if the EU were helpful because we have the EU as donors. I tell you, when we started in 2009 and 2008, definitely with all the refusal from the government, refusal after refusal to do projects, having the EU back then in 2008 helped a bit. Not much. What, what is very helpful is just like she said, you go, you knock doors, you have coffee, then you have coffee, then you have coffee, then you knock the door of the other political party, and the other political party, and the other political party, and the other party, something so silly, doing theater inside this prison. And then you get them to understand that you are not politicized yourself, and that you're not with this one against this one, and this one against this one, and this one against this one. You know, and the approach is... Just like that, and I always approach them telling them what's in it for them. So I want to a job again, just fine. I'm very, very sad for what's happening in Egypt. So sad. And I don't know if you have a question about the question. An answer for you. If we do something, will anything change? I don't know. Maybe the style that we're using in our association is that I go to them and I tell them what they will gain from it. So we have to show them what's the advantage for them to be able to have theater inside the prison. Some people really had to sign. For example, I knew that some people would like to be on diff uh, three different TV channels. So I facilitated this for one of the persons. They don't care about your project. They don't care about it at all. So know how to play it. So it's that dirty, but I'm sorry. That's it. Any government in the world. For me, it's a virus everywhere. So we have these kids playing around. One has the chocolate, one has the marashi. How will the zero be who wants it? Okay, and get what you want, and what your society wants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, just to remind, this is our last remark, so if you want to answer one of the questions that were floated, but also to say, say the last things in summation. Thank you. Because in some places, this could be the conclusion for Lebanon. Really, I'm speaking only about Lebanon because you already have the laws. I don't know what it means to go to the Minister of Culture in Egypt or in any other country. But in Lebanon, because we're that divided and there is not only one dictatorship, there are different dictatorships. There are at least 10 or 12. You can divide them and tell them you can get this at the detriment of the other, of the other but at the expense of the other. But for alliances, I think that alliances are temporary and punctual. So if I feel now, right now, 
that if we work together, we have mutual interest, positive mutual interest, then let's do this alliance. It's not a marriage. It's not a partnership where both parties will melt and a new entity is created. No. In an alliance, we have two entities that agree that if they work now, this would be beneficial for both of them. This is why when I spoke to Hanan and Angela, I told them, now we have a minister of culture that has a legal background, and this is something beneficial to us. Some, and he declared since before that he had a problem with censorship being imposed to cinema and theater because it's done by the general security. So we took advantage of this. We told him, you said that, so help us to work on a draft law. So we didn't go to one of the MPs. So to be able to create an alliance, we need to share the vision. I worked a lot with uh, organizations and associations. Sometimes there are people inside the board, and they don't have one shared vision. So if you want two associations to agree on the same vision, it's not something wrong. This is really something rich and plural, and you shouldn't have the same vision, or else it would be a problem. The last thing I wanted to tackle, I forgot what it was. I don't know if I was able to answer some of your questions. Thank you. Shukran, uh, Naila. Can I add something? To conclude, I think that partnership uh, is a strategic question. We need, we all need to go into the depth of this topic to see how it should be done. Like Hanan has said, and I personally think that we need to see different experiences before creating partnerships. There are two types of partnerships to create, whether the partnership against, against a common enemy or creating partnerships for one objective. I always prefer the second type of partnerships. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmad. I just want to thank IEM for inviting me because I was never thinking to come here actually. And uh, please invite us, <laughs> write us and uh, talk to us. We need, like, we need each other and uh, we need this whole territory to continue working in our country. Uh, it's like a very <laughs> general thing that I want to say. Anyway. <laughs> I am only speaking in French because my English vocabulary is too poor in fact. Um for me, the partnerships, for me, partnerships uh, alliances, associations, associations solidarity entries are all the vehicles, the necessary vehicles that we need to have in a world and a society that is fragmented, that is divided. We are in front of people building walls, frontiers, borders, censorships. If us, the artists, the cultural operators, if we don't do something, then no one will do it. Where if we're not here to generate these meetings that are no more proposed by society, it means that we are surrendering. So we need to build long-term visions. We need to feed something. We need to have something to propose that is a coming generation. And this is our audience. We think for them. We think 
about the politics the, or the cultural policies for them. And this is the essence of what we need to propose. So we need to go back to the source. But for me, I would like to say that these alliances and this uh, solidarity should be permanent. Just like I speak, for example, in the concierge here in the station, or if I want to ask something to our neighbors when we have a festival, so it should be done on all levels. Or else, if we're alone as artists, we won't be able to do anything. So we need to try and rebuild organic uh, series, organic chain so that we would have a responsibility, each of us on their own level, to build our society, to build a change in our society. We are responsible and we need to find fruits for that. Thank you. Yes, it is strongly political, of course. I don't want to be long. I think that what um, Mohab mentioned is very important. He clarified to which extent the alliances are important. We have sometimes the problem itself and then a partnership is created. For example, if we have a collective problem, so when someone wants to take someone into jail, then we find some kind of thinking to create a partnership. And what Mohab said, that there is only another side of it, and it's uh, the topic in general. We had a problem with uh, kids in streets, and uh, I had the honor of defending them. In the beginning, they arrested Azzuddin Khaled Muhammad, a person who had made a video. They were actually doing videos since long ago from the streets. It was, of course, related to the state, whether to people who are pro-state or against the state. And, of course, he was against the state. He was with the Akhwan, with the Brotherhood. So the state or the government arrested Azzuddin. So it was important since the beginning that the artists would all say something about it since the beginning, like what happened with the characterist uh, Dawish since the beginning. Since he was arrested, all the artists spoke about it. And here, social media was really important and influential. So then he was released. But when the four others were arrested, things changed. And this, is, this was said to me by a person who worked at the prosecutor's office. In the beginning, he said, it's OK, they will be released. But when they came back again to prison, because they stayed first for 100 days, then this time was uh, renovated, was renewed. So I said to them, why are you doing this? They're inside. They're not inciting for any demonstration. They're just speaking about the situation in the country, whether you like it or, like, or not. So to, they told me that they will be then opening to the other young people to do the same. So being, uh, building alliances is essential. This is what I touched myself so that we can go to the second level. If we want to speak about the level that we have now, this is what the state wants. And they will come out of prison if they agree not to speak about the situation in general. And if they say that they will not collaborate with anyone, then yes, they can leave. But if they decide to speak in general, to make studies, to write an article about what happened, then of course they will deal with them in a different way, but they will have a greater impact on the art in Egypt and on the creative work that you have in Egypt. This will be something very important. I'm, I apologize if I was long, but I need also to say something else. All these uh, legislations 
or all this, not only what is said is influential, there is another legislation, another legislation, legislation that wasn't mentioned. We found it in the Gazette, in the official Gazette. There is a new law that tackles specifically the artists. What does it say? It says that if you go to any archaeological place and you take photographs, they put new uh, new penalties. You can pay up to 30,000 pounds, and this is a big amount of money. So only to go inside an archaeological place to take a certain shot or to take certain photography, then you have to pay for it 30,000 pounds. So the big producers like Soki or others, they can pay 30,000 pounds. Of course, they have no problem with it. And he spoke about love uh, in the second part, meaning that life will continue and uh, some people find compromises with the state. But uh, what will the underground artists do and the other kinds of artists? And no one spoke about this uh, new law yet. I'll try to do as much as I can, but I, but I can't do everything on my own. I hope that other people also will be interested in this uh, more. Actually, there were more lawyers that were in solidarity with us. And uh, this is, was a good indicator. There were lawyers uh, that were defending those who were in the demonstrations, but they're also now interested in what's happening and uh, they have understood what the state w is doing now. Thank you very much. So, the only person who is excused is Aurelion, because I think he has some uh, theatre to make. But listen, panelists, please stay put. We're really just going to take just a couple of minutes. Mahmoud, Natasha, Rana, if we could turn on the PowerPoint. I would like to respond to the questions briefly as a segue to an alliance that we're about to announce. Mohab, your question also stuck with me and made me think of words like mutual support societies, solidarity societies, where we take the preventative or proactive step in certain situations when we know the state can latch, latch out to us. Um, to let people know that we might need them if danger or a situation comes our way. What we're about to announce, and I'll, I'll, I'll wait till my colleagues are here and I'll, I'll give a little bit of an intro, is uh, about an alliance that can help keep artists safe, that can be reactionary when an artist is in danger. Again, Moab, to your point, there was a case of an artist in Uganda a few years ago and some of us who work on artist safety, we knew that he had been taken away. We knew that he was in prison, and it was a weekend. And the worry was that if we were not reactive within 72 hours, that we would not know where he would be after the weekend. So if I may use the word alliance, those free expression organizations that got together um, worked with the diplomatic corps. We all said, who do we know? Who do we know in the diplomatic corps specific to Uganda? There was the Irish ambassador that was known amongst our group, and we specifically asked the Irish ambassador to contact people in the government to ask about this case. Now, we don't know if it saved his life or saved him from being put in a deeper prison than the one he was already in, but what we do know is that sometimes, going back to what Alma and others were saying, is that we can engage parts of the government, even if we were parts of, say, the, 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 the broader uh, space of diplomacy, without needing to wholly sign on to what they um, are about, let's say. So, without further ado, Rana and um, I'm going to stand up. Right. Yes, very quickly. We know you're tired. We know you're ready to drink. But, um, um, well, I'll, I'll do the setup. We have three slides behind us. It's not a big PowerPoint. Um, Almaurid in May, some of you were here, Nan, others. We had a meeting here in Beirut that was called Artists Against All Odds. Julianne, Marianne, several of you, Abdallah, several of you in the room, Mahmoud, I won't name you all, but I'll, I'll forget some. Daniel, yes, how could I forget Daniel? Um, 
We were here and we discussed what we might do specific to the context of this region. And over a few months, some of us have come together to put together an alliance that hopes to have some responses that are somewhat tailor-made for the region. If I could switch here behind me, you see that there are four members listed, Omaru, Dancing on the Edge, Afti, and my own organization, Artist Safety Net. If we could switch to the next slide, I like the way these logos lined up, but I'm not speaking for Amaru, Afti, or Dancing on the Edge when I give these six points, but I'm showing what Artist Safety Net is about to do, what we've invited the other organizations to help us do with the regional focus, and that is that given the last 10 years and the, I would say, opening of the hearts of arts administrators and human rights defenders and uh, various organizational forms, we have a real moment where there are more safe spaces for artists around the world. I would say the Syrian conflict alone has opened up hearts. Uh, a young woman, our uh, colleague here in the room from Berlin, asked me just before the session what one might do if they had a space that they wanted to activate as a safe space. The six-point uh, outline that I give here is a six-month uh, online training that we will work together, these organizations, to convene. It is comprised of art spaces all over the world. It's a small cohort of up to 25 from Santiago, Quito, Sa uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Beirut, etc., etc. Um, I'll hand over now to Rana to tell a little bit about the Maurits in the project because we hope through this collaboration with this alliance to include five or more art spaces in this region in this training. We hope that all the training is translated in Arabic, Spanish, French, and other languages. Rana or Natasha. So we, we gathered in May with several stakeholders concerning uh, uh, the artists at risk in the Arab region. And what is, I think, very important to stress is that um, by then, but still now, it is really an alliance in the making. So it is really, uh, we need to really tap in uh, organizations already working with this, or networking, so that we really, you know, that this is an open process. And um, now, maybe very quickly, about like in May, we had several recommendations that we can send to anyone who's interested, and we kind of focus on. Uh, three level of danger. Uh, so the preemptive stage, what can we do? We have the simple things that Anna will tell, like what already has been initiated over the last couple of months. Then the acute uh, stage of danger, so uh, which really acts for uh, uh, immediate action. And then there's also the post danger stage, uh, whether it is in the Middle East or in Europe or anywhere internationally. And uh, that is also, I think, a very um, important state as we have already so many migrants uh, scattered everywhere and then how also we can tap into all our know-how and networks to link artists with the local scenes, uh, with the cultural scene to make them, enable, enable them to really continue their work as artists and not just being forced to maybe um, collaborate with some uh, local artistic project that really is very nice for our trade days but then Thank you, Natasha. The fact that we have the Maurit Hitler and thought of having a swift reaction in an attempt to protect actors or artists at risk in the Arab region. In this statement, I will go back to two key terms. Uh, alliance equals solidarity in this case. Why? Because we started from the fact that we as individuals are under threat, are at risk, maybe not now, but in two years, in two months, in two years, or in the future. How can we protect others while we are at, at risk? The only solution was to establish such an alliance with a, a set of stakeholders, uh, the stakeholders a, uh, who are uh, eager to uh, support us, and because they have a long history and a long experience, this is our first attempt in uh, 
establishing an emergency fund. So the round table was a call to help for institutions and creative uh, associations to support the region through, as Natasha said, uh, three stages, preemptive uh, stage, uh, when there's the risk and after the risk or the danger. Uh, at this stage, we are tackling four uh, issues, f funding, uh, establishing a fund to uh, deal with issues uh, that uh, have a direct impact on um, the artists who are at risk and who are at, uh, in their country or in a neighboring country. Maybe if one artist in Yemen, if he goes to Jordan, maybe he will still be in, uh, in under uh, at risk. So this fund aims at ensuring a safe haven and a safe environment for artists and cultural actors and players in order to get rid of uh, this danger and to swift towards a, a more a safer haven. This is temporary. This is a temporary responsibility because we are not the Ministry of, uh, and, uh, of Foreign Affairs and we are not the Ministry of uh, Interior. We cannot grant uh, these, uh, the artists uh, the uh, refugee status, but we can uh, support uh, through networks, uh, uh, networks establishment the uh, safe environment for these artists. This is a briefing space for these artists. I think that we have experienced such uh, situations when we had to flee from some uh, danger. The second uh, part is very important, which is very important, is uh, the knowledge. The knowledge by artists of the best techniques to adopt when they are at risk. And we are focusing here on the artist, especially artist safety net and uh, other relevant institutions. And we will start working on a database in an attempt to uh, establish networks between the artists in the Arab region with networks that can help them in case uh, of any danger. What we ha do we have to say, what we don't have to say, and others. We also, also have the legal part of, uh, led by uh, the Institution for uh, Thought and Freedom of Expression, aiming at establishing a legal uh, Arab front. Uh, which has uh, different goals, first of all, to increase awareness and legal knowledge by artists. So whenever they, uh, uh, they are, the artists are attacked by any other, uh, by, by any security uh, force or by the state, they will have uh, to know their rights and their obligations, uh, and there should be p pressure and lobby in order to develop and an amend legislation and laws. And there is an attempt to establish an international network, including associations and uh, tra uh, artistic trade unions, and I got to know at least 10 associations uh, during this uh, meeting that uh, can play a role, a leading role, mainly I'm talking here about European institutions, and that can play uh, the, the role of a mediator between the artist who is uh, living in another country and the audience, the media, and uh, the uh, audience. I don't know if we can call it a platform or a movement or a program, but nevertheless we are raising uh, our works on establishing partnerships in order to uh, reach a common ground. Okay, so there will be lots of questions and I'm going to comment this pretty briefly because I really want just uh, launch an open course on uh, human rights uh, for the law. So it should also be quite like Not at all is uh, human rights because I think that uh, this allows my kids to be able to do the violations, but also they will be people who are socialized and have thousands of people who are part of the international violations. That's wonderful. And if I may, I know we've got an overall tired. I'm not very simple. She's encouraging us to work with some of the human rights organizations. And we do. We invited the European Institute for Democracy and Human Rights to be with us here in May. Let me give you one of the most perverse statistics that you'll hear. In the human rights world, the value of a life, one year of relocation, clocks in at around 60,000 euros. In the arts world, the uh, biggest uh, fellowship ever, the Arts Protection Fund, clocks in at $30,000. The human rights world values the life and a relocation of a human rights defender and activist at over twice as much as we are able to do in the art world. It's in 
that a shame. But the challenge that people have given you from the stage today, Marianne gave it, Rana gave it, many of us gave it, is that there are more things we can do. Um, I also forgot to mention that Alma and Ron were also in our meeting in May. I think I have the last slide. It's my last attempt to be funny. Um, someone very interested for me. Uh, I'm sure that my prison jokes uh, click in later. But anyway, this is uh, to invite you that there's more space, that the alliance is not closed. This is not a fait accompli that we've already figured out. We do need your help. Uh, we do see the mobility issue in this region to other parts of the world, and that figuring out these laws, sometimes is figuring out who's the smartest lawyer in those areas that can help us to navigate, sometimes to subvert um, the norm and to make space for the artists um, when they're in need. That's a subset of humanity when it's in need. The very last thing I'd like to do is to thank IATM. I think what's naming the theme of free expression and having the online campaign that accompanies this physical satellite did for the meeting in May was it allowed us to have some continuity, but it also brought a lot of new faces to our, our door to maybe engage in this line. So thank you, IATM, and uh, thank you, Julia. <laughs>